So today I'm going to show you uh, some problems I found here on a cooling tower for a service call. The service call was um, there was water gushing out all over the place on the floor. They couldn't figure out where the water was coming from, why it was leaking. So they shut it off. They turned everything off uh, for the weekend. Monday they turned the water fill valve back on and they said it was just constantly filling and they didn't know what the problem was and they just left it for a couple days. So now I'm here. Um, first thing I noticed was water fill valve was running but uh, water was gushing down the overflow line into the drain so they're filling and overflowing at the same time obviously there's a problem with your fill valve or the control for your fill valve so I verified that turns off so I'm not worried about the water fill valve second I come over to here which is the new um, low water level max water level sensor for the fill valve uh, there used to be an old one on the system over here that was disconnected that these old guys have, which is here. Uh, it's just a little paddle sensor, so it's got like a float kind of like that, and when the float goes up, water turns off, and the floats down, water turns on. So you can see it's disconnected. Obviously right there is my heater. This is our heater for the cooling tower. It used to run off that thermostat, disconnected now, and now it runs off automation. So this is the new water, um, water conductivity sensors for filling. So right here is we have three probes that go down, a grounding probe, a low water level, and a hot max water level, and a relay that turns on the water fill valve, which is over there. Um, so first thing I did is I noticed this guy was filling when the green light was on. So this one works is if it's in auto and the green light is on, that means the contacts are open. When that green light turns off, uh, stays on, sorry, and the red light comes on, that means the contacts close and the water fill valve should come on. So it kind of led me to think that the contacts were welded. I pulled it apart, verified the contacts were welded there. So that was problem number one. Thankfully, the contacts that were welded were from one to three. Uh, they're normally open. So what I did is switch power to 11 and nine and those contacts were okay. So now that relay is working, but we're gonna replace it, uh, something like quote, just because of one welded it's pretty old, looks original. Eventually the other's gonna uh, weld and it smells kind of burnt. So gonna replace that. Second, I wanted to check the conductivity sensor to see how it uh, was doing. So I pulled it out, I cleaned the sensor. Here's kind of what it looks like. You have the max fill, low fill, and ground rod. It's kind of how it's wired. See the max is the brown, do, do, do. And when I went to put the sensor back in after I cleaned it, it would only get to about here and I couldn't push it any farther. And it felt like there was something stuck in there. So I cracked this valve and no water came out. So obviously there's a plug. So I got a piece of ready rod and broke all the dirt out. And it was just pure mud that came out. This was blocked, this was blocked. So with no water being able to travel through here, when the tank fills, your water level won't come up. So no wonder it was also running forever, they said. It's because they couldn't get any water flow in for the, the sensors. So I broke that free, got all the mud out of there, cleaned the sensor, put it back in, and then I tested my system, so I drained, but well, I'll talk about that later, I couldn't drain it, but I manually drained it with a bucket until it needed to fill, and I verified that my controller would fill when it required, and it would turn off when it hit the max, the max sensor, uh, which it does, and I'll kind of show you, it's an auto, so it's not running right now, because it's full. If I turn it to hand, uh, you can see, so turn it back to auto ah there we go and this when you see that energized that's when it should fill so i fixed that problem um the other problem i had as i kind of mentioned there quickly is when i wanted to drain this cooling tower so i could make sure it fills properly crank that open that's the drain valve and almost no water came out so there's a problem that also needs to be addressed. Uh, so like any anyone would do, I would crack this union to see if it was blocked with the valve closed. And uh, I found out whoever installed this union made it almost impossible to install back again. As soon as I undid the union, it dropped and twisted. So obviously it's gonna be a bitch to get that back in. This is a two inch line here. Um, but once I opened it, I could see clearly through to here. So I knew the blockage would be farther up in the cooling tower. 
It took us probably an hour to get this unit back on and it's not even on properly as you can see it's just temporarily on there because uh, whoever plumbed this in they I don't know how they got that union on there in the first place but they must have dented everything and torqued it so how this should be plumbed is you should have a union here and a second union here so if this issue happens again you crack both unions and you actually remove that whole drain piece and then when you go to put it back in with both unions being off you can actually put them on properly. So if you crack this union, you still can't remove the pipe or do anything because it could slide about a quarter inch, but that's it because this is solid two inch line right here. So that's a nightmare. We're gonna quote them to put a second union in, replace that one because it's cross threaded as we couldn't get it back to seat properly. So we just got it on for now. Just we don't want it to be fully disconnected until they approve this quote. Um, so the next thing I did was remove this intake filter for the cooling tower and underneath there it was just full like handfuls and handfuls of scale and dirt you can see quite a bit of it i pulled out there and i finally got enough out where we could actually drain this whole system so we drained most of it and got as much out um, so that issue was fixed for now so what needs to happen still on the site is we're going to send them a quote to put a second union in replace that union adjust the piping so it actually lines up correctly, vacuum out the rest of the scale that's in the bottom of this tank. Um, that will be one quote. Uh, as that is more immediate, we need that fixed because we don't want it to have a blowout if they had a drain and water flood the whole place. Because I'm in the penthouse right now. Second, um, this relay I want to replace as it's original and I just don't trust in working more than maybe a year at most. And, that one, I told them we don't have to approve it right away, but at least we want to quote out there so when it does fail, they have a price and they can be ready budgeted wise. It's always good to have your customer prepared for a cost than to throw, them up, throw it at them just randomly. So we'll be sending a quote to replace that and he's going to now clean this, <clears throat> this chamber uh, when they do their service to make sure it doesn't plug up with dirt and they're going to keep an eye on this guy. So this is like an older style cooling tower here, but you have pneumatically actuated dampers there. It comes down, the blower in there, blows the air up, and then you can see water comes over here and that's where it chews out the sprayers, comes down, gets sucked back in, and then it goes through for a heat exchanger and into our chiller and such. Um, there's lots of different types of cooling towers. Like some you'll have just water and fill and they'll have sprayers and then it'll have tubes going through and those tubes will hold the, the, the fluid for cooling and then the water just in the system is just constantly being recirculated and filled for uh, helping with um, cooling versus this style is, it's not, it's not like that obviously. So it's kind of a flawed system. They also have the chiller, which kicks in at above six, 15 Celsius. And then they have this also plumbed in over there, which we call the economizer um, coil. Is that one, it just uses cold water that the cooling tower puts out to chill in the winter time and it's a heat exchanger with the building water in the blue so in the winter time the chiller's off but they still want cooling so we call it economizing cooling or free cooling so water goes through chills in the cooling tower it goes through goes through the heat exchanger with the building water and then that um, is in turn used for cooling the building you see a lot of different styles in some buildings but it's just kind of how this guy's set up it's not perfect but it works so hopefully that helps you guys uh, kind of understand a little bit about how water fill valves work. There's the flap style or the, what everyone call float style. Things to look out for as little plugs, how you should actually have this set up. Uh, like again, if you guys have any questions, uh, shoot me a message and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks.